Hello everyone, welcome to Physics Pathfinder. You are watching part 2 of Gas Laws, which includes kinetic theory of ideal gas and its application. So as we discussed earlier, we are doing part 2 of Gas Laws, which includes kinetic theory of ideal gas and its application. Before we go further, let me remind you to like and subscribe my channel and press the bell icon for next updates. So today's session, we are going to start with a small derivation. This derivation is on of the pressure of an ideal gas. We start this by considering a small atom, a single atom having mass m moving along x-axis. So as per our assumptions of an ideal gas, the atoms are highly elastic. So if it is moving in a container, having a mass, moving with velocity v, as it hits the side 1, it bounces off and moves towards the side two. So it keeps on moving and is bouncing from one end to the other. So as you can see, a mass m having velocity v, the product of mass times velocity is momentum. And due to the frequent collisions on the sides of the container, there is change in momentum, which is this to mvx. And as we know from Newton's second law, that change in momentum over change in time should give you force. So here we are, next step is to find the change in time. So you know that time is distance over speed. So for the molecule, it is moving from 2 to 1 and 1 to 2. So the distance covered is 2d. And the velocity is vx. So change in time is 2d over vx. If I divide both of these, because rate of change of momentum is force, I divide equation 1 by equation 2, get the equation for force of one single atom moving along x-axis. Since I am, we know that the, there are innumerable molecules, let there be n number of molecules, where the average velocity is v, then total force will be n times v squared. This is the force only along x-axis. What about the forces along y and z? If I see the total force, fx is one-third of the whole force. So you get the final equation here for a force, which is n over 3 times mv squared over d. Now we are applying it to the concept of pressure is force per unit area. Area of the box is d square and force we just now derived. We are going to divide f and d square so you get a final equation which looks like this d cube is volume so from here you will have lot of variations for one single form you can note down these because all of these will help solving questions which are exam style so if i retain the nm over v which is total mass over total volume or shift V on the other side. If I retain Nm over V, then I know that mass over volume is density. So one of the important forms of pressure is 1 over 3 rho times the average velocity square. You have other equations which you need to know that number of moles of a gas is equal to the mass of the whole gas over its molar. We will also be using the equation that number of moles of a gas is also equal to number of molecules over the Avogadro's number. We will also be using that the ratio of universal gas constant over the Avogadro's number is a new constant called as Boltzmann's constant. PV is equal to NKT. Instead of NR, you can replace it into NKT are the variations. So you can see here from here, the previous derivation, if I retain PV on the other side and replace it with NKT, you can cancel the capital N on both the sides. This is the first variation of average velocity square. Taking a square root, note down the variations. This is first, this is second, this is the third variation of the same form. You can use any of those based on what is asked in exam. 
more variations of RMS velocity. Now, this average velocity is also called as root mean square velocity or average. This is a special type of velocity where the normal average is difficult to find. So, when a molecule moves equally on every direction, average velocity gets cancelled. So, we do root mean square velocity, which will give you an average velocity. We are going to apply this in exam style questions. The next part which is extremely important for sums is that average kinetic energy, translational kinetic energy is equal to 3 by 2 kT. So here this, if you know any any of the unknowns are required, you can find them. More variations of translational kinetic energy. Instead of K, I can use R over N. We also have the energy. So in the syllabus, you can even note the energy as total energy is nothing but uh, kinetic energy, translational energy of one molecule times the number of molecules. Again, the variations you can see here. So the energy U is 3 by 2 NKT. Instead of NKT, you can also write small n RT. Again, note down the variations and use according. Exam. Let's do exam style questions now. Look at the question. A fixed mass of an ideal gas. So let's note down important things. Key points are fixed mass. Expand slowly at a constant temperature. Very important. What are the three statements which are correct? Let's go to the first. You are Expanding the gas molecules means there is an increase in the volume. As volume increases from Boyle's law, we know that it's inversely proportional to pressure. Pressure reduces, then the molecules will hit less on the sides of the container, which is a correct statement, first one. The average further av distance is increasing between each collision, which is also right because number of collisions are less, so they have more distance. Average kinetic energy decreases. This is not right. This is wrong because average kinetic energy decreases again. Because temperature is a constant. So you should understand that temperature is on the basis of average kinetic energy. So third is a wrong statement. So the answer should be only one and two, which gives you a. Let's go to the next question. Balloon of volume V contains 10 milligram of ideal gas. So mass is given, pressure and volume is P. What are you doing? You are adding additional mass of gas without change in temperature is important because temperature is a constant. What happens? When you added some extra volume mass, of the same gas, the volume changed to 2V and pressure changed to 3V. You have to find that extra mass that is added. So here we are only using the concept PV is equal to nRT. You can see here, if I rearrange the term with N as the subject, PV over RT is equal to N, N2 and PVO, P1, V1, RT1 is N1. You have to get the answer of both the equations. You can see P2 V2 over RT2 gives you the N2. Can I write P2 as 3 P1 because volume changes to 3 P and volume changes to 2 V and pressure changes to 3. If I cancel all the terms, so if I am equating N1 is equal to 6 N2, is also equal to mass of the gas over its molar. So N2, the mass of the gas is unknown. This is what we have to find. Molar mass is M. What we know about the first gases, it's 6 times N1. 6 times mass of that gas was 10 milligrams. So you get as 6 into 10, which is 60. You can cancel out common terms like 
because it's the same gas. So here X is the total mass of gas in the container. What is asked? I have asked how much is added. So if 60 is the total and 10 was the original, what was added was 50. So the answer is C. Now in conditions where you are given something like this, you have to look for what is that which is not changing in the equation. See here, number of moles are changing, temperature is changing. We want the answer for Px over P. So what is same in this is the identical boxes, which means the volume of x is equal to volume of y. Let's start with the assumption of Vx is equal to V. On rearranging, we get nRT over Px is equal to nRT over P1. Now, the number of moles on the y side is 2n. Temperature is T by 3. So, substituting, you get Px over Py is nothing but 3 over 2. So, the answer is B. Let's look at example more. You can see the air consists of 0.9% of argon and 0.002% of neon. The molecular mass of argon and neon is given as 40 and 20 respectively. You have to find the RMS speed, this BRMS. So if you remember, we had spoken about one equation which is half mv square is 3 by 2 kT. Rearranging with V as the subject, you get square root of 3 kT over M. We are asking you to find the ratio of V of argon and V of neon. V of argon is 3 by 3 kT by M, which is 40. And the other, when you divide, it gets reciprocal. So it will be 20 over 3 kT. Cancel out the like terms. What is left is answer A. Let's see a theory question. Look at the question. It's a graph of PV versus T. So be careful of the multipliers. You have to use it in the question when you solve. What else? Mass of a single molecule, one molecule, is 4.7 into 10 to the power minus 26. Question is, first, find the units of PV. How do we do it? Unit of PV in SI fundamental units. Pressure times volume. Pressure is force per unit area. And volume is, if I put it in the SI units, it's Newton over meter square times meter cube. So you are left with Newton meter. You also know that force is mass times acceleration. So kg meter per second square. One more meter here, so this becomes meter square. So the answer is kg meter square per second square. Next, using the graph show that the gas is an ideal gas. So if you look at the graph carefully, graphs can be used for area under the graph or the slope. What is making sense is PV over T, which is a slope. If you remember, if I rearrange the equation, write P over T. And what is left is N number of moles times universal gas constant. So in some way, if I am able to show that PV over T or different slopes is a constant value, I can show that it's an ideal gas. So if you can see here, I have marked down the endpoints. Change in y is y2 minus y1. Change in x is x2 minus x1. On taking the slope, I get the answer as 0 0.015. So taking the slope multiple times, you should get the same value. Or the other way to do the question is 0 0.015 over the number of moles. If you can find, if you're getting it in the next sum.
we are able to find that and it is equal to the value of the constant 8.31. Then we can show that it is an ideal gas. So now let's go to the last sum. In the last sum, they are asking for mass of a gas. So first step is PV over RT P over T already you know. You can use it from the previous one. 0 0.015. Divide that by universal gas constant you get. Once you get N, what do we do? We know that N times Avogadro number times the mass of single molecule gives you the mass of the whole gas. So when I multiplied all the three, where M you can take it from here, 0 0.7 into 10 to the power minus 26. Avogadro number is 6.023 into 10 to the power 3. When you multiply all this, you get the mass of an ideal gas is 5.1 grams. So with this, we come to an end of today's session. Hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe my channel and press the bell icon for this updates. Bye-bye.